We all love money, but how much do chess players make? For the answer to this question, we turn to Grandmaster Vladim... No, not him. Ah, yes, here we are. Vladimir, how are you? Call me Grandmaster. I'm sorry, Grandmaster Vladimir. How much do Grandmasters like you make? Oh, ev every month I earn about a few million dollars. If you work for 10 years on your chest, maybe you can do it too. So, so let me get this straight. You're saying if I devote the next 10 years of my life to chess, I can make millions a year. Of course, why not? It's pretty simple, it's very easy. If you are watching this video, I think it's fair to presume that you absolutely love chess and you're looking for a way or maybe you're just curious about how you can make money in chess. Well, if you're an amateur chess player, you can check out my previous video where I talked with Michael and Dylan from Chess Lifestyle, how they have created a lifestyle which revolves entirely around chess. But before we talk about amateur players, let's talk about Grandmasters. Tournament that's a big money tournament and you're far away from home. So many times I would play in the last round and if I won I could eat. And if I lost, I had to drive home for three or four hours and figure out how to pay the rent. From listening to Ben, one thing is very clear. Even if you're a grandmaster, unless your name is something like Magnus and maybe just add Carlson at the end or you're someone at the same level, there's no hope for you really making a stable income from chess. So basically your dreams aren't gonna work out, you won't be able to just play chess for the rest of your life. Because of this, a lot of chess players just quit chess. Alan Treffler is a former World Open Chess Champion, and guess what, he quit chess. And now he's a billionaire, so I guess you know what the smart choice is. Ruben Fine quit chess for a lucrative career as a psychoanalyst. But don't worry, there are other options out there. But I was making a good living, because the truth is, and you guys might not know this, like, even if you're like 14, 1500, if you know the right people in New York City, you could get jobs after school teaching in some of these private schools for $80 an hour, $100 an hour, $150. If taken seriously, chess coaching can actually be quite lucrative. Also, it has one particular benefit. You don't really need to be a grandmaster, you just need to be a player of a reasonable strength so that you can help out weaker players and yeah, you could do pretty well for yourself. Now if you wanted to become a grandmaster but failed, you could consider making some videos on the internet. If you do well, you could get quite famous and make quite a lot of money but if you don't, you're left with a ton of embarrassing clips of yourself on a very unforgiving place called the internet. The role model for many chess content creators is Antonio Radic. Agad Mato or the guy who can't stop saying Hello everyone. Hello everyone. Hello everyone. Hello again everyone. Has over 1 million subscribers. He is not a title player and has earned a name for himself doing game commentary. He has been instrumental in spreading chess across the globe and has also rekindled my own interest in the game. Hikaru Nakamura literally does not care whether it's Twitch or YouTube or simply playing chess. He's good at everything. There are many content creators who are making a good living for themselves. You could also become a manager of a chess player. International master Lawrence Trent was the manager of world number two Fabiano Caruana for two years. Currently, Lawrence is working very hard to become a grandmaster. While we are talking about Lawrence, we can talk about something else that he does, chess commentary. Chess commentary is quite popular and you're probably aware of some prominent chess commentators. Lawrence Trent, 
David Howell, Jan Gustafsson are probably just a few names that you've heard of. For strong players, becoming a second is quite common. Being a second means helping strong players prepare for tournaments both opening-wise and psychologically. Peter Leko was the second of Vladimir Kramnik for his match against Anand in 2008. There may not be as many options as maybe in some other fields, but if you really want to do something in chess, you'll find a way. There are tons of ways to make a stable living for players of different strengths as long as you're willing to put in some time.